Hi. This is the first in a series of short screen movies introducing the board off design tool um, that I've put together in Microsoft Excel 2007 over the course of the last 12 months while I've been playing around uh, teaching myself um, how to make twin tip kite boards. The idea of this first video is just to give a very quick fly through on all each of the major sections in board off and introduce some of the conventions that you'll see uh, throughout board off um, in terms of color coding things like that. What I'll do is in subsequent videos is to take uh, do a much deeper dive into each one of those sections and show you how to work with it and some of the practical considerations. So there are really three major sections in board off. The first uh, relates to design the outline of the board so this is the mathematical equivalent of taking one of your mates boards and tracing it out on a piece of uh, butcher's paper. The second major section is around designing your rocker and concave uh, profiles. Uh, now while the rocker table setup uh, that I had in mind when designing this is one where you have jigs down both sides and one down the centre and then the rocker table surface is bent to get the right compound curve in it. It's actually very easy to take the design uh, of the jigs that this produces and get the measurements that you would need for adjusting uh, the adjusters on your rocker table um, if you've got one where you have a permanent surface um, adjustable um, along the sides. The final section is the flex modelling section. Um, now this was a really interesting project in its own right. The theory for modelling something as simple as a kite board has been around for a very long time, certainly well over a hundred years. And the, equation, the fundamental equation that's made use of, um, called the uh, Bernoulli-Euler equation, um, is still extensively used in beam bending theory and civil engineering, that, that kind of application. Uh, it turned out to be really an interesting exercise and I found it to be a particularly useful design tool not because the numbers that come out of it um, can be particularly relied on um, and I say that because the theoretical values that I plugged into into that model can vary dr quite dramatically from the actual values of things that you make use of so for example the uh, the um, elastic modulus of your uh, core material can vary can vary wildly as can the properties of your fiberglass and your resin um, and it can vary according to how you go about doing it so for the resin for example um, is impacted a lot by relative humidity and the drying conditions whether it's post cured um, at elevated temperatures all these kind of things so there's lots of practical considerations that make it difficult to interpret the absolute number coming out of that um, but it's actually very um, insightful in helping you get an understanding of trading off between pairs of parameters so looking at the difference in the impact of thinning a core out versus taking off uh, a layer of fiberglass um, tapering the end versus having a step down profile these kind of things so those are three major sections the outline the rocker and the uh, flex modeling so let me just give you a quick look at each one of those sections and talk about some of the conventions uh, first thing you'll notice is that each of the major sections, uh, the tab colours down the bottom here, are matched so that you can see which of the tabs correspond to the particular section. So I'm looking here at the outline parameters and outline template tabs, which, which is where you configure and then print out or export in various file formats uh, the outline of your board. One of the conventions that's used throughout board off is coding of cells. Yellow cells indicate that it takes user input and you can feel free to play around with those, um, put in your own values. Grey cells are typically used in the formulas in not only the current tab but often elsewhere in the workbook as well and so steer clear of changing these ones. In most cases those cells will be protected so you can't actually go in and modify them but there are a few cases where it was necessary to leave them unlocked in order for the macros of which there are many in board off um, to be able to access those cells. In in also in each of the sections uh, there's a typically a chart where you can see uh, the output from the parameters you put in. Something I should mention is that because there is a large number of formulas in, um, in board off the calculation mode has been set to manual so that means that any time you make a change to a set of parameters so let me for example change this so that we can pull up uh, a, a different template say one that you can see here um, number four nothing changes until you hit the F9 key 
when you hit the F9 all the uh, values will flow through and you can then see up here that uh, a second board in this case has been superimposed because actually one that was there previously I'd taken a snapshot and saved it in the background. Um, parameters are typically kept separate from the outline uh, part, sorry, the part where you actually export the outline and this is an example here of the outline templates. These are the common uh, operations you'll have on each one of the template pages where you'll export it. You can either calibrate it for printing on a standard printer just um, and then pasting all those pages together which can be very tedious um, or you can export it in a DXF format which is the um, Autodesk's sort of de facto stand or was the Auto, Auto, uh, CAD, the AutoCAD de facto standard produced by Autodesk which I now believe has been superseded by DWG files but it's still um, used uh, and, function, and works in a very large number of CAD programs including, including the free ones that I've shown on my website um, and then the export and merge uh, simply allows you to put multiple uh, outline parameters sorry outline templates together in the one picture so you can build up a multi-desk a multi-deck board for instance second section the rocker concave profiles again follows very similar sorts of conventions and sorry something that I should have mentioned um, I'll just go back to the outline parameters here is that one of the other things that is common in all of the major sections is that there are spaces where you can save down the uh, sets of parameters that you're playing around with so over here in this section called save templates you simply add in parameters that you want um, down this section here and then if you wanted to make use of it you would go up and change the template selector and that will flow through. Back on the rocker concave it's exactly the same thing up here we've got a rocker template number you select which template you want to pull in and then it will suck into the uh, grey cells here which are used in the formulas those values that you've saved in the templates down here. Um, there's, <coughs> so as, um, there's as I mentioned earlier, the configuration I've got in mind, I had in mind when I was putting this together for a rocker table is one where you have uh, jigs down both sides of the rocker table. On this chart up here, what you can see this red line is the, um, is the jig that runs down the outside of the rocker table and it's specifically set up for the rocker table width that I've got. So I actually work with quite a rock, big, uh, a wide rocker table, eight, 870 millimetres, so uh, you know, almost twice as wide as the board. Um, in part because single bed bases turned out to be fantastic for doing it and also it gave me lots of space to work around it. These templates will change if you have different size ones because this is using actually very similar sorts of, um, uh, of modelling that's used in the flex modelling and that is um, modelling the surface of the rocket table as a bent beam. Uh, rocker templates, I'll just come back to rocker ribs in a minute, but rocker templates, again this is the page where you'll export um, in various formats or calibrate it for printing on your normal printer. Rocker ribs, rocker ribs are the lateral profiles of your rocker table. So if you're building a torsion box like rocker table where you've got ribs running in both directions, so laterally and lengthwise, um, you can make use of these rocker ribs to print off templates for those lateral profiles and again you can uh, print them export them as a DXF file. Uh, rocker templates we've already touched on. Now I'm going to skip over the waterline tab uh, because it's a work in progress so I will touch on it later um, but I'm going to skip over it now just because this is a brief fly through. Weight calc, obvious, tells, it allows you to calculate the weight of the board, takes into account the laminate schedule which I'll get to in a minute as well as the actual dimensions of the board and some of the hardware um, and things that get used putting it together. Now the final major functional section in board off is the flex modelling. This was a really interesting, interesting exercise in its own right um, because, um, because the theory is, is so readily available and, and kite, kite boards really are very simple things to model. It is a little bit more sophisticated because there are simply more parameters um, at work here. So the parameters, unlike in the previous sections where they all went into a single tab, they're split over well really they're split over three tabs here. The first one is the laminate schedule so this is the stack or the pile of reinforcement material you're using. Um, I'll pull an example just here of one template one and what you can see here are the three plies 
um, on the top surface and on the bottom, so it's obviously it's, it's symmetrical. Um, the type of material that's used, weight, density, so this line across here we got you know, close enough to 200 gram uh, biaxial, and this, this is e-glass, I just happen to know from um, uh, some data sheets that I came across. So that's the laminate schedule. Uh, the other important part obviously is the profile of the core itself. And again, uh, same kind of uh, conventions used here. You've got sample templates set up in these columns which you pull into the calculations by changing the input selector over here. What this allows you to do is set up some of the profile parameters, so how thick the board is in the middle and how thick it is once it gets to the end and how it tapers off, so from where it starts to taper off or wh and whether it's a step off or a nice smooth gradient. You can also set the parameters for the core, so obviously um, it's a very different proposition to be using a wood core versus a foam core um, and this is where you can set those parameters. Um, it also has the capacity uh, to put in some stringer materials, so if you're using you know, carbon wrapped uh, foam sections you could put in some parameters here around those carbon stringers to get created. And then the final piece of the puzzle, so these are the parameters of the board, the final piece of the puzzle in modelling the flex is to actually uh, create some tests. So what I mean by that is applying forces to the board to actually bend it. Now one of the most common ones that uh, people do when you see them on the beach is put, uh, stand the board up on one tip and put your hand in the middle and bend the, bend the tip. So effectively bending the board from the middle. So this is equivalent to applying a load at the tip um, and clamping the board in the middle. And this is what these few tests here are doing in setting how much the force is. Uh, I tend to work with the 15 or 20 kilo uh, just because if I'm uh, trying to pull that sort of force into it just by hand without any kind of apparatus to, to hold it in there, I actually find it quite hard to hold it steady at 15 kilos for much longer um, than, a, than just a few seconds. So once the template, once the uh, test is applied, the output from all of this is the, ben the flex profile of the board. So what you can see down here, this blue line, is the shape that the board takes when that load's applied. So in this case, the uh, 20 kilo load being applied to this board, um, which is a particularly stiff board, only bends 70 millimeters, and that, that is particularly, particularly stiff. Down below the flex profile, what we've got is some plots of the maximum stresses and strains in the top and bottom layer, um, because it's a and so that, wh why is that important? Well, because it's those maximum stresses, and these occur really in the outermost layer of your um, of your reinforcement, will determine uh, whether or not the the reinforcement is uh, reaching its limits and is likely to crack. So that's the three major sections um, in board off: the outline parameters, the rocker rocker concave profile, and the flex modelling. So. In the next, uh, I'll wrap it up there, and in the next video I'll do a much deeper dive into the outline parameters section and show uh, how to work with it and some practical considerations um, when you're thinking about um, making use of this. Thank you very much for tuning in, and um, I shall get on and uh, have a go at making the next video. Thanks very much.